Uh, greetings, brethren. Uh, I have a very wonderful opportunity to thank God for everything that uh, he has done in my life. And I think where you are also. Uh, you are uh, thanking God for everything that he has done, even in, in this time of uh, troubles and uh, and pandemic. I think this is just the beginning of sorrow that I see sometimes back. But I want to talk about um, a certain uh, topic that has, uh, has uh, brought a lot of problems to most of uh, the people about uh, the state. I mean, Elijah. Where is Elijah? Where is Enoch and Elijah? Uh, most people believe that uh, when, uh, uh, when, uh, when people die, they go to heaven. And uh, because uh, uh, in, even in our CRE, Christian religious education, uh, we are taught that Elijah, Enoch, they went to heaven and they are there in heaven. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the word of God is uh, the only, uh, the word of God is in the Bible. That explains everything. If we look at uh, the story of Elijah and the story of Enoch, we will find out if they are there in heaven. Uh, in fact, uh, most of us believe that even Abraham is in heaven, David is in heaven, all the patriarchs. But let's have specifically look at um, the two, that is Elijah uh, and uh, Enoch. Let's start with, the, uh, with Enoch. Uh, Genesis 5 verses 21 uh, says, Enoch lived 65 years. 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot, uh, begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So verse 23, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. So all the days of Enoch did not exceed that one. All the days of Enoch were just 365 years. And look at verses 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Most of the time when we are in funeral, especially in Luland here, where we are in Kenya, you'll find that when somebody dies, we say that God has, took, has taken him. Uh, the Bible says in verse 24, and I'm reading again, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That may sound very unfamiliar to you. That he was not is the same way as he was no more, which means he was he walked with God only 365 years and he was he died. That's the meaning. I know you are shocked where you are, and that is the truth. That Enoch walked with God 365 years. All the years are summarized, and there were only 365 years. Now, if we come there, we will find that. Our Messiah, Messiah, was a lamb without blemish. I think if you look at Exodus, because there is something I'm trying to drive at. Exodus 12, verses 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. So the lamb that was uh, to be used during the Passover was to be without blemish. But the lamb of God... In uh, John chapter number 1, John chapter number 1, John chapter number 1, verses 20. Uh, let's look at John chapter number 1 and verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God. He did not have any, any mark. Which means he did not sin, he did not lie. Uh, in his first Peter one verses nineteen, first Peter one verses nineteen is telling us something here. First Peter one verses nineteen, and we read it. One verse nineteen it says, uh, "But with the precious blood of Messiah, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot." So Jesus did not lie. Uh, Jesus said something in John 3, 3 verse 13. John 3, the book of John 3, 13, 
Jesus said something that we should believe because he was not a liar. He did not have uh, he was a lamp without blemish. 3.13 says, No one has ascended to heaven, but he, he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. I think uh, this version has had it in a, who is in heaven, but this was Jesus speaking. He said that no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is Jesus himself. So Enoch uh, Enoch walked with God many years before Christ was born. But this is Christ telling us that no one has gone to heaven. So, can we believe our theologians or the Bible or Jesus Christ himself? And if you go to Hebrews 11, if you go to Hebrews 11, go to Hebrews 11, and you'll find something here. Hebrews 11 is called faith chapter in Hebrews 11, we find something here. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So by faith, we are told that by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. That is in verse 4. In verse 5, then we are seeing Enoch now. By faith, Abel, uh, I mean, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. I think that is now where people think that he did not die. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. I think that is where if you reach, you will think that Enoch, <laughs> Enoch went to heaven without dying. Uh, but look here, if you look at uh, verse 13 now, verse 13 is saying this, these all died in faith, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So brethren, all these people died, including Enoch, including Cain, including Abraham, so, in verse 13, if Enoch did not die, then verse 13 could have said that these died except Enoch. But I'm surprised that all of them died. In faith, not, ha not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. I mean, there, there was a promise that God promised them. And I think if we want to see this, we can go to Titus 1 to see the promise. They also, they promised, they, I mean, they did not receive the promise. But they were assured of them. Through faith. And I think if we go to Titus, the book of Titus is going to give us the meaning of, uh, the meaning of this, uh, the meaning of uh, uh, the book of Titus, chapter number 1, and verses uh, 2. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. So here, <laughs> we find that God promised eternal life, which Enoch did not receive at that moment. He died. Because in verse 13, he's saying all these people died. Uh, let me tell you, uh, Enoch could not have uh, gone to heaven be without passing through death, while our Messiah, who is Jesus Christ, passed through death. Enoch is not our savior, but Jesus Christ is our savior. He died. So look at this, this comparison. Let's see. So look here. Uh, we are told that all of them, they, was, they, they, they were given a promise. Uh, uh, let, let's go back again to, uh, to Hebrews. Hebrews 11 is giving us something very... Uh, okay, in Hebrews 11, it is saying... Why did they, didn't uh, they receive uh, the promise? Why didn't they receive the promise? Uh, I mean, in verses um, 39 and 40, it's telling us um, something like this. And all of this, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, which we have found that the promise is the eternal life. They didn't receive this promise. 
let me read it again. And all these, all, all, including Enoch, including Elijah, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Verses 40. It's saying, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Just like if you, if you cook the food, you cannot just call one child after the other to eat if they are all there. You will call all of them and they eat together. That is the same way God, having uh, prepared something good for us, all of us, uh -huh. he did not want to show favoritism. So all of us are going to enjoy the eternal life together. I think that is what is uh, uh, there. So, uh, Enoch, let us come to Hebrews 11 and see what happened and what is, the pro what is this death. In Hebrews 11 verse 5, but, uh, it says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. I can remember, uh, there is a time when Messiah, Jesus Christ, is telling uh, the people that these people who are with that, that's the disciples who are with me here, some of them will not see death. You know, most people did not understand what Messiah was talking about. The first death is called the sleep. And that is why if you go to uh, the book of Daniel, I think uh, uh, what will give us a clear picture here is the book of Daniel 12. The book of Daniel 12 is talking about something here. Let us see. Uh, in verses 13. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest. Are you seeing that is the first death now? You shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. So the first death is called the rest. But there is a second death, the death by fire. Second death. You know, in uh, Revelation 20, Revelation 20, look at Revelation 20, and verses, um, in Revelation 20, verses uh, 4, yes, uh, verses 6, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the, de the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Uh, which means, you see, uh, the second death is what we call death. The first death is just resting. This death, when somebody dies, you cry, you cry even for a month. Like somebody who has no, no hope. This first death, my father died, my grandmother died, two of our children died, but they are resting according to the, the book. There is the second death, the death by fire. So, what is written in Hebrews 11 simply means that, in fact in Kiswahili, it, it gives us very well that he should not see death, should not see death, which means that he should... One day you will not see death, the second death. Going back to our, uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, because that is where uh, there is a controversy. Hebrews 11, uh, Hebrews 11, verses 5. Let's go there to, so that we can understand it well. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. Okay. Uh, I can just say that he was taken away so that he, he should not see death. That is the correct word. Should not see death. That is the second death. Because in verse 13, all of them died. Why? Because having, uh, having seen the promise, having been told the promise, and they had, the, they, they, they confessed that, they say that they were pilgrims and strangers. But in verse 39 and 40, we are told that all these people are waiting to inherit the eternal life with all of us. If I paraphrase. Now, what about Elijah? People say, people say that Elijah went to heaven. Let's go to First Kings. The book of First Kings will give us some a clue 
Yeah, in fact, First Kings 11. And the book of... Uh, sorry, Second Kings 11. Second so, Kings 11, sorry. Uh, in Second Kings... So, let's be there and see what's happening here. 2.11 2 2nd 2 Kings 2.11 if uh, we can read from here and see what was happening 2nd Kings 2.11 and we'll find what happened to Elijah and I think many people have thought that Elijah just went to heaven without passing death uh, we want to see from there 2nd uh, Kings 2.11 it's going to give us something there 2.11 is saying Mm. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a wild wind into heaven. So uh, I think from there that is where people think that Elijah uh, just went there. He went to heaven <laughs> without passing that. Okay. Uh, if we look at this. We, there is nowhere we are told that Elijah went to heaven. In fact, I can give uh, an example with Philip. When Philip got an Ethiopian eunuch reading the, the book of Isaiah, he did not know the meaning of this, what he was reading. But Philip came and uh, asked him if he is understanding what he's reading. Then he told him that I, I, I can't understand without an explanation, I think, uh, if I paraphrase. Then Philip explained. The Ethiopian eunuch saw it necessary that he should be baptized. He was baptized. Then Philip was transformed. He was transliterated to another place. He went to a certain place. We don't know whether he went to heaven, but he was found. He, Philip was seen again and he preached. Philip was an apostle after the, baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch. What I'm trying to say is that after some years, after some years, when um, Elijah was seen, after some years, when Elijah was seen going to heaven, he wrote a letter. And I think Second Chronicles 21 verses uh, 12 says, And a letter came to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus says the Lord God of your father David, because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, your father, or in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and have made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to play the harlot, like the hal tree of the house of Ahab, and also have killed your brothers, those of your father's household, who were better than yourself. Behold, the Lord will strike your people with a serious affliction, your children, your wives, and all your possessions, and you will become very sick with a disease of your intestines, until your intestines come out by reason of the sickness day by day. I think... What I'm trying to say is that um, uh, here we are told that after some years, in fact after some period of time when Elijah was seen going to heaven, because in the Bible we have three heavens. We have the first heaven where birds fly. The second heaven where we have the heavenly bodies. And the third heaven, I think uh, Paul has talked about it. Uh, the throne of where the throne of God is, nobody has gone there. That is what Jesus was talking about. So here, Elijah did not go to heaven. Elijah maybe disappeared here, where we are seeing is called heaven, according to the Bible. Then afterwards, he was he, he went to a certain place which we don't know, because we cannot add or subtract. Then uh, Elijah died. That is the simple thing that I can explain. Because our Messiah uh, summarized it very well that nobody has gone to heaven. He is the one who came from heaven. And he is the one who is there in heaven, sitting at the right hand of God. So I think that is where we should know. Uh, in Matthew 17, uh, verses 1 to 11, there is what we call transfiguration. And in transfiguration, this is where people say that uh, 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 the, 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 there was Moses and Elijah. So, <laughs> Moses and Elijah appeared. 
I think if we read there, we'll see the transfiguration. I, I mean, the, the, the whole uh, story of transfiguration simply tells us that we have the prophets and we should listen to the prophets and the law. Moses was preached. Moses is law, the commandments. It does not mean that Moses came from heaven during transfiguration and the two, two disciples saw him. It does not mean Elijah came from heaven and they were seen. No. Some people will also ask, when uh, Messiah resurrected, there were some people also who were resurrected with him, the saints. And they will argue that they went to heaven. The simple answer is this. These people are awaiting for the resurrection. The first resurrection. That is the simple answer. So we should know that uh, this, all of us, when we do well in this, uh, I mean, when we are, uh, uh, when we keep the commandments of God, and when we, uh, when we keep our calling, and when we, uh, uh, when we, uh, when we uh, uh, endure to the end, we will be saved. Just like those people endured to the end, and they were promised eternal life. So, brothers and sisters. Let us endure to the end because that's what we are told in Matthew 25, I think. Matthew 25 and verses 13. Uh, 25 verses 13, it's saying this. Uh, let's see that. Uh, 24. 24. thirteen, please. 24. 13, it says. 24. 13, it's saying. Matthew 24. 13. Uh, Uh, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. So if we endure to the end, we will be saved. So the Bible is full of promises. The promise of the eternal life is the biggest promise. So we should strive until the end. Because if we strive until the end, then we will be resurrected. And when we are resurrected, we'll be kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. I think that is what is written there in uh, Revelation 5, verses 10. That when the seventh angel sounded, uh, when it, uh, the seventh angel will sound, then the kingdoms of this world will be of the Christ and of uh, his people. And I think... In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 to 17, we are being told that uh, uh, the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first, including Enoch, including Elijah, including Abraham, including David. So all these people are awaiting the resurrection. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you.